We'll live in interesting times. Today's stories. Money, guns, and brides fuel South Sudan's cattle wars. Governments adopt legally binding agreement on plastic waste. Venezuela's Guaido holds a rally in Caracas. Yellow vests in Lyon say abstention is a vote for Macron. China says to hold more trade talks with the U.S. in Beijing. President Trump says he is very surprised by his son's subpoena in the Russia probe. Nebraska flooding leaves local farmers in uncharted waters. A fake heiress cries as she is jailed for scamming New York. Plus, American Samoa celebrates Flag Day. Hello everyone, I am Rose Papa Angelis bringing you stories from around the globe. And this is Eagle News, Washington, D.C. South Sudan has a long history of cattle raiding, but where once the practice was carried out using spears and regulated by traditional cultural norms, raiders are now more heavily armed, better organized, and frequently deadly. The result has been a marked increase in lives lost through cattle raiding activities. For the herder communities of South Sudan, this field of cattle is effectively a living bank account. For many, there is their only source of income, an asset seen as more important than currency. So it's no surprise that these prized animals are often the subject of cattle raids. But after the outbreak of civil war, guns replaced traditional spears as the weapon of choice for raids and defense against them. Since a power-sharing truce was signed in September 2018, bloodshed from the conflict has lessened but has increased in cattle raids. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> In the New World and Dinka cultures, the country's two most important herder communities, the cow is everything. The reverence of cattle even finds its way into marriage customs. In South Sudan, it's common practice for men to purchase a wife in exchange for a given amount of cows or use cattle as a dowry. The best cow in South Sudan could cost $700. Seven hundred, six hundred dollars per cow. So, and that is uh, the first class cow. So you can see that how 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 important a cow is in society. If you have hundred of cattle, you have million of, of of dollars, of course. At the end of the day. According to the UN peacekeeping mission in South Sudan, 218 members of herder communities were killed this January in tit-for-tat attacks, almost three times more than were killed in the four months from October 2017 to January 2018. Rolf Payet, Executive Secretary of Basel, Rotterdam and Stockholm Conventions on Dangerous and Polluting Waste, speaks about the introduction of a framework for the disposal and recycling of plastic at a supranational level. Next call. But what is historical and important here is that the, the, the parties will, for the first time, agree to treat plastics in a very special way so that it will allow the planet and, of course, the different countries to put in place controls at the national level, but also in the recipient country where it is being sent to ensure that those plastics do not end up uh, where they should not end up. Thank you. I said before, there's nothing wrong with plastics as, as far as their use is concerned, but when we dispose of it, when we are responsible about it, when there's no management structure, there's no framework in place, then it creates this greater um, environmental problem, which is today also not only having 
uh, impacts on birds, on whales, and, and biodiversity, but it also is in our food, uh, in our food and, and, and in our bodies. So. A top UN envoy told AFP Friday a dramatic transformation of the global economic model will be necessary if the world truly wants to tackle the problem of climate change. Luis Alfonso de Alba, who was appointed late last year to prepare an ambitious climate summit in New York in September, insisted, we need bold actions. He stressed that climate change should not be merely considered as an environmental problem. He said we are talking about a transformation of the economic model that is going to be needed to achieve the results we need. The September 23 summit at the United Nations is billed as the first major stock-taking gathering of world leaders on climate change since the Paris Agreement was reached in 2015. The event follows a string of reports containing dire predictions about the future of the planet as carbon dioxide emissions continue to rise pushing target sets out under the Paris Accord further out of reach. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said he wants the summit to be action-oriented, and he has asked countries to present concrete, realistic plans to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 45 percent over the next decade and to net zero by 2050. The ALBA said he was working to identify ambitious projects to showcase at the September meeting, as well as new models of cooperation and coordination between countries, organizations, and public and private players. He said it is evident that private financing will be indispensable to move from the billions to the trillions that are going to be needed. Fighting climate change, he said, is an issue that requires a transformation of the way we consume, the way we produce. This is not a process in which we can aim at a gradual increase of the ambitions. We need some drastic changes. Despite the huge challenges, De Alba said that he was optimistic, pointing to the enthusiasm and commitment he was witnessing from governments and non-governmental groups alike. He acknowledged through that not everyone was equally engaged in the process, including the host country of the summit. President Donald Trump's 2017 decision to pull the United States out of the Paris Accord has cast a cloud over global efforts to rein in climate change. But the ALBA said the federal government in Washington was continuing to work on a number of areas that are important to fight climate change, and that he hoped the U.S. would participate in the September summit. The UN climate envoy also hailed the work done by youth activists like Swedish teen Greta Thunberg and said young people would have an important part to play at the meeting. He said, we want them to be part of the solution and not only take note of their very obviously justified anger because of lack of action. Demonstrators take to the streets of Caracas to support opposition leader Juan Guaido, who urged his supporters to reject fear a maintain nationwide protest against President Nicolas Maduro. Y de nuevo recibimos con alegría la comunicación de la diplomacia y cancillería china donde dicen que se aproxima a una solución a través del grupo de contacto. Maduro está de salida. Maduro está derrotado. Maduro está débil. Y es evidente. Ahora, ¿cuánto más nos cuesta ganar? ¿Cuánto más hace falta para que Venezuela gane? Va a depender de nosotros. Depende de que la gente salga a la calle y que se tomen decisiones fuertes, contundentes. Me parece muy permisivo y muy tibia la, la, la manera de proceder, aún así uno los apoya pero se necesita más firmeza. Estoy luchando ahorita fuertemente contra esta dictadura. Tengo los 20 años sin parar de luchar. Tengo 20 años sin dejar la calle. Tengo 20 años sin dejar mi bandera. Estoy luchando ahorita porque Venezuela está llena de parásitos. Parásitos por dentro y parásitos por fuera. The yellow vests demonstrate in Leon for the 26th Saturday in a row to stop the suffering, while Jerome Rodriguez, a leading figure of the movement, calls for people to vote in the European elections, arguing that abstention is voting for Macron.
Dans un premier temps, c'est de pouvoir les remercier euh, suite au soutien que j'ai pu recevoir euh, après l'attaque que j'ai subie euh, à la Bastille. Et c'est une façon de pouvoir les rencontrer et de les remercier parce que j'ai eu énormément de messages. La deuxième chose, c'est aussi de les J'appelle au vote, j'appelle surtout pas à l'abstention. L'abstention, c'est voter Macron, ça rime. Aussi bien pour le vote blanc, on évite. Et, euh, et surtout, on, je m'inscris dans un vote anti-Macron. On est motivé, c'est un, un acte national, donc euh, il faut montrer aux autres villes que tout le monde s'intéresse à chaque ville de France. Et c'est un soutien euh, national, on bouge, on va à Paris, on va... Euh, mercredi j'étais à Toulon, euh, voilà. On, on essaye de, 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 bah, de grossir les rangs de chaque, chaque ville à chaque fois. Petit à petit, je pense que les Gilets jaunes auront moins à porter ça. C'est-à-dire qu'on s'aperçoit qu'il faut arrêter de subir. On peut agir, on n'est pas obligé de tout casser, bien sûr, hein, mais on peut agir, on peut apporter des idées. Tout le monde a des bonnes idées. Coming up, China says to hold more trade talks with the U.S. in Beijing. President Trump says he is very surprised by his son's subpoena in the Russia probe. Nebraska flooding leaves local farmers in uncharted waters. A fake heiress cries as she is jailed for scamming New York. Eagle News Washington DC will be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Eagle News, Washington, D.C. China's top trade negotiator Liu He said on Friday in Washington that trade talks with the U.S. would continue in Beijing, but warned that there would be no concessions on important principles. I 大家都一致认为啊，双方需要保持这种呃继续磋商的良好的势头，尽管呢暂时有一些阻力和干扰。呃，双方也同意啊，呃，在未来在北京再见面啊，继续呢推动我们的磋商。现在双方呢在很多方
Relentless spring rains have soaked the breadbasket of the Midwest, threatening communities and destroying agricultural production already hurt by the U.S.-China trade war. Farmers Claire and Gail Duda cannot remember a natural disaster as devastating for their farm as the one that submerged much of Nebraska in March. Mostly we had soybeans and they can't handle the flood. They, they're short, they grow close to the ground uh, and, and you get a couple feet of water on them and they're, they're trash, they're no good, they're worthless. And in terms of we have, we've never been through anything like this, and so we really don't don't know. But uh, our income has dropped, of course, significantly uh, because of this persistent flooding that never drops. Uh, there's a big part of our farm that we just don't have access to. So we had very little time to make any preparations because the water just rushed in, and it covered all of this land here that we're standing on. And it was about four, maybe six feet deep in here. Yes, because China buys a lot of our commodities from us. They buy soybeans, they buy corn. That's what they get from us. So consequently, it was our products that are, that are most affected by that trade war. The overall big picture, did it need to be done? Absolutely. And he's got the wherewithal and desire to do it. But does that mean that we're all very happy about it because it's costing us? No. Anna Sorokin, a German-Russian fraudster who tricked New York High Society into believing she was a wealthy heiress and stealing more than $200,000, cries as she is jailed for up to 12 years. She hoped for the best, but 4 to 12 is a fair sentence. Uh, the judge was fair. She considered all of our sentencing memorandums and our arguments. Uh, the plea was three to nine, so there was no way that there was ever going to be a sentence that was less than the plea. And uh, I think we're both satisfied with the result. Obviously, we would have hoped for less time, but certainly this was uh, expected. What did she say? She's a strong woman. I mean, she's been incarcerated for almost two years by herself in America in Rikers Island, one of the world's most notorious jails, and held up strong. She's been positive. She's been working with me. Um, and I'm sure this won't be the last time we hear from her. <laughs> There's a detainer on uh, Ms. Surikin, so the immigration authorities will take you know, possession of her when she is released, and uh, she'll deal with whatever the deportation issues are at that time. When we come back, American Samoa celebrates Flag Day. Eagle News Washington, D.C. will return shortly. This is Eagle News, Washington, D.C. I am Rose Papa Angelis. The territory of American Samoa celebrates Flag Day each year in April. The origin of this public holiday can be traced as far back as 1900 when the United States took control over the eastern half of the Samoan Islands. But it wasn't until 1960 when the Samoans adopted its own flag that is still in use today. This year, School and other institutions throughout the South Pacific Territory continue to show pride in their unique culture and status. Eagle News correspondent Ariane torres Suan has more. In a previous report from American Samoa, we highlighted the longboat race known as Faltasi, which served as the first day of series of events leading to the territory's Flag Day celebration. On the eve of the actual holiday, various groups showcased the Samoan culture through song and dance contests, before a jubilant crowd and a panel of judges. There were other moments when the audience was even invited to go up the stage and dance with the performers. High school student Ashley described her own costume. I am wearing a Taupo attire. A Taupo is normally the daughter of the high chief, but in terms of uh, performances in front of the, um, our island, it's usually the person that, um, a female, 
that a school, whoever decides to come and represent their school. In my case, I am the student body president, so therefore I am here as a topo representing my school. High school teacher Leah shared her own experience about preparing for these events, which meant a lot of sacrifice and cooperation from students and fellow teachers. The SGA and the NTHS were um, honored to be given the opportunity to represent Newly Voltec. Although we want to take the whole entire school, um, the number is very limited to these um, specific festivities. So um, the leadership team and administration have decided that the SGA and the NTHS would represent um, um, Newly Voltec. So the SGA and NTHS uh, was able to um, um, put away and excuse himself from the classes in order to prep for our festivity here, here at the Utulei Swing Aula La Tuvasa. So they were able to um, prep for two months so we could come and show pride, not only in Nuli Volte, but as well as American Samoa. The final and main event was the Flag Day Parade, which took place at the Tafuna Veterans Stadium. There, various schools, government agencies, private organizations, and even other countries took part as they marched before a large cheering crowd and several dignitaries at the grandstand. Finally, Leia and her fellow teachers indicated their promise to continue promoting Samoan culture pride to the younger generations. Um, having the opportunity to teach the students, the reformers, the Samoan culture dances of the Maulu'ulu, uh, the Sasa Lapalapa, the Tawalunga, and also the Siva Ailawafi or the fire knife dances. Those are very tradition, traditional dances in the Samoan culture. And though we know that Flag Day also um, reflects a time to celebrate the years of American um, dominance and also um, taking care of us. So Flag Day also means cultural day. So cultural day means um, in the sense of dancing, we were able to uh, teach the students those dances to feel the spirit of Flag Day and also having a strong um, pride not in our school, but in their identity as Samoans, doing dances. Thank you. Reporting from Pango Pango in American Samoa, I am Arian Torres, Suwan, 1 with 25. Thanks, Ariane. That is today's Eagle News, Washington, D.C. Join us tomorrow for stories that matter to you. Visit our websites at eaglenews.ph and eaglenewslive.com. Like us on Facebook, Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash eaglenewsph. Thank you for watching. I am Rose Papa Angeles, and I am one with 25.